September the 5th, 2023. It's my 34th day on the lion diet. I've only beef, salt and water. I've been on the carnival diet for five years. I've been very strict at certain times, up to three, four months, but I have included other foods during that time and each time they've never agreed to me. That's why I finally decided this is time to give up trying to reintroduce different foods, even butter. Every time I've tried to introduce it, I feel worse. My skin gets worse. So I decided to go full lion diet for a year. That's the challenge. So I've done 34 days. How do I feel so far? And how is just eating the same food every day doing for me? Well, it's satisfying. Eating beef every day, same food, same meals. I'm having about 300 grams per meal at the moment. <clears throat> and I look forward to the meals. I eat when I'm hungry. So it could be, I'll, I try to leave four hours at least. But if I'm not hungry, I'll go a little bit longer. And I try and get four meals in a day. And that's enough where I'm gaining a little bit of weight at the moment. Not doing no exercise, weight training to build up weight, but my muscles are growing. I don't know if you can see that. That's... But I, I am the underweight carnivore. So I was at 107 pound at my lowest when I was really ill. I'm up to 123.5 now. I'm hoping to get up to about 140, 150. I'd be happy with that. I wouldn't even want to get any, any bigger. So, why did I become ill and what were my illness symptoms? Well, when I was young, I liked athletics, I liked cycle racing, I liked weight training, swimming. I, I did quite well. I was in cycle clubs. Won a couple of races. I won the best, you know, if the top riders there wouldn't win. But uh, on my day, I could do well. I could, uh, I could keep a good pace. But um, I was, I always had these little illnesses from foods where I got ill. Even when, even back when I was in my twenties, aches and pains and stuff. And I had a bad back one time, which lasted a long time when I was young. So, as I got older, now I'm 58. But in my mid forties, that's when problems really started coming when I was gaining weight. Because of eating a standard sad diet. So I was gaining a bit of weight. I went up to 11 and a half stone, which is big for me. And, um, I started to get really bad pains then in my joints and things and my skin went bad so I started cold water sea swimming then and that did me good that was good for the skin very good but um I got back into cycling then at the late 40s for 47 I think it was and uh I knew, was, I, I knew there was something wrong with me. I couldn't train like I used to. I was like, recovery, terrible. I was getting fit, training, building up fitness, getting my skills back for like, on the mountain bike and cross country, you know, which I did, I had lost because I hadn't done it for so long. I was, what's he eating now? I, but, uh, my dog is eating something there. Some bit of wood. But um, recovery, like after hard training or after racing, was terrible. I was, uh, I knew there was something wrong. It wasn't getting better. I did it for a few years, this. 
and it wasn't improving. The illness was terrible. I'd, I'd be exhausted, unable to do anything. When I was racing, it won't, we'd race on Sunday. It won't till Friday where start, we start recovering. I'd just be able, I couldn't do any training in the week. So I was talking to my friends, uh, the cyclists, and they weren't getting the problems like I was. I knew there was something wrong here. This is not normal. I was trying diets then. At that time, I was trying different diets to get myself feeling better. And um, for some reason, well, for some reason, it was all over the internet about plant-based diets. So I ended up giving up meat, going low fat, basically cutting the meat down. That's what I did first, cut the meat down and cut down the fat. Because I read all about how fat is bad for you. So I went low fat, but I was still eating meat. But then I, I just got in my head that the meat is making me ill. Because every time I had bacon, I was going to So I thought it was meat. So I quit meat. I went bloody, basically vegan. And then I got obsessed with like these low... Low fat, I thought the fat is doing do me. I was, I was getting better times and doing better on the bike. Low fat, it was crazy. High carb, low fat. Potatoes, lots of potatoes. So, also the juicing, raw, raw juicing. And I went raw fruitarian. All these big mistakes, I can be easy to see now what, what did I do all this for? I was collecting seaweed and eating it raw. That made me more ill. I think I, I, think I juiced raw broccoli one time, junk that, God. Well, anyway, I got really, really ill in the end then. I, I couldn't, suck, even cycling was making me soil every time I did any, like, hard exercise or, or a race and I, get, I was getting really, really ill. I wiped out. And then it just all happened at once. All these symptoms came at once where I was freezing cold. I, I'd gone, I'd lost loads of weight. Weight loss was terrible. Shivering all the time. Cold. Freezing cold. And because uh, I, I was going off camping in my camper van, so I had to stop the camping. And the pollution, but the other thing, it was terrible. All smells were making me ill. Like I've never had this before in my life. So I used to go off driving in my camper van, now all of a sudden, just driving to places to make a meal because the fumes of the cars in front of me. And smoke smells were making a meal. With a family barbecue, I'm sitting there. I couldn't stop coughing, I'd get away. Everyone's so strong with you, I don't know what's wrong with me. Perfume smells would make a meal. Washing smells, you know, what clothes, when they're washing clothes, washing powder and stuff like that, detergents, cleaning agent, vinegar, bleach was a terrible one. Was, still is. All these things are still making me feel ill. I can't tolerate smells anymore. Oh, look, helicopter. So I can't tolerate smells anymore. Even after five years on the carnival, still bad with smells. But the worst thing of all, I had a white patch appear on my tongue. So I knew there's something wrong with me here. So I went to the doctors and um, they gave me tests. I got diagnosed with low B12, low thyroid. I also had like hair loss on my, on, on my legs, both my legs had lots of hair loss and some on my body, my chest. So that's what they diagnosed, they wanted to give me injections of B12 because I was so low. But I just thought, no, I'll go on the beef, I'll start eating meat again, I'll go just, I'll raise the B12 myself, I'll eat liver and stuff. So I refused that. And uh, I started eating meat again, but I was wiped out. I, I haven't, I, I had to give up cycling. This is in 2017, and um, 
I haven't done any exercise again, I'm still not right. I still have not got right, even on the carny wolf diet for five years, I'm still ill. And also one of my main symptoms was terrible anxiety. And I, I'm still suffering from that. But I had, I did have a lot of um, trauma going on with my life. Really, really bad. And I think that caught trauma, the, it, stress causes cortisol. And I think that, that also interfered and caused damage. And I don't know whether the high carbohydrate diet, I was on a really high carbohydrate, tons of potatoes, tons of bread. Oh my God, I was addicted to bread. I was eating bread non-stop. It was really high. I think I might have, might have got some diabetes problems because I was getting dizzy. When I stood up, I get dizzy. I was feeling terrible. And um, I stopped going to the doctors because I argued with them. So I was explaining the symptoms about smells making me ill. And they weren't taking me seriously. So I ended up arguing with them. I just gave up going to the doctors, give up on them. And uh, it was then in September the 1st. 2018, where my brother sent me an email about the doctor who only eats meat, which is Sean Baker, being interviewed by Joe Rogan. Then he sent me another one, Jordan Peterson being interviewed by Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan, and uh, I dived straight in on the carnival diet the next day. And uh, the trouble with me. The mistakes I'd made, just with anyone who wants to start on a carnivore diet, you know, wants advice, is don't listen to all these people saying about how great raw is, because I, I tried to go raw a lot, and it was hurting my stomach. I tried and tried. I was getting really ill. So they just stuck to carnivore, salt, cooked, normal. But anyway, because I kept going off the carnivore diet, I'm back into veg, I'm back into bread, I'm back into some potatoes and coffee and cocoa. And I, I, I can't drink caffeine. I was addicted to tea. Well, I was drinking so much tea throughout the day, it was unbelievable. And chewing the tea bag at the end to suck it. So when I got this cancer of the tongue, I had a biopsy in 2017 and they said it was all right. But it was still there. For all them years, it was still there. So 2021, August, when I went off the carnivore diet, and I was eating junk food again, high carbohydrate food and crap, it turned red. So I went to the dentist. He sent me to the hospital then. I did another biopsy and it was cancer. So, with my anxiety, there's no way I want to go and have an operation. He was on about removing my lymph nodes and everything. So, I, uh, I knew about the PKD diet, the paleo ketogenic diet to cure cancer and that. So I thought I'll give this a try. I told him what I was going to try and do. They thought, uh, the doctors thought I was crazy. But um, I went full... PKD diet, low protein, hardly any amount of weight of the, the meat, high fat, it was like almost four to one in the fat to protein ratio. And my ketones are up to five. My blood glucose is really low and um, it was working. Every day I'd look at it in the mirror, I could see it shrinking. It was 100% working. This diet was working, but they had side effects. And the bad side effect they had on me was I was already underweight. And that's when I lost loads of weight and become worse for it, more ill, unable to walk, just exhausted, complete exhaustion. So, uh, 
I was doing good. It was cooling. If I'd had more body weight, I could have gone fast. I could have done a lot better. But in the end, the pollution came in. Because I live near the steelworks, the pollution came in. People were burning coal around it. And it's when the wind drops where I live and everyone's burning coal to heat the houses, the smell, it comes into the house and everything. And it affects me so badly. So as I'm looking at the cancer in the mirror, it's getting bigger. It's growing, it's aching more. Even now when the pollution comes in, everything aches more. My joints ache more. I feel it really ill. So uh, I have to accept I need to get an operation. So when for the operation then? They promised me they'd have some meat for me to eat and when I was recovering from the, in the hospital, they arranged the diet for me. They promised they wouldn't inject my tongue because they put me in, under anaesthetic. So I said, don't inject my tongue with anything. Just give me the operation, I'll be all right. So I woke up in the morning. In the morning. Oh, I went in for the operation in the morning. I woke up in the afternoon, a few hours later. And uh, my tongue was numb, so I knew they injected me. They didn't listen to me there. And uh, when I was recovering in there then, they uh, didn't have any food for me. I was hundred and seven pound going in there and they had no food for me to eat. The food was unbelievable. It was junk food. That's what they were feeding all these cancer patients, which were in the ward with me. Junk, poor junk, Kellogg's cornflakes, cereals, old sugary cereals, bread, toast, toast and bread, tarts. After the, after the food, they'd have like a, a custard tart, apple tart, with, you, know, you could see the sugar on top of it. I'm thinking, where's, where's the food I asked for? Where's the meat? I got really annoyed, didn't I? I lucky I brought some stick of butter in with me, so I had some butter to eat. And I ended up, I had a, a, a yoghurt. They did have some sugar in, vanilla yoghurt. But uh, they kept on coming round trying to inject me with uh, painkillers. I was in pain, yeah. But I told them, no, I can handle pain. I don't want the painkillers. I don't want to be injected into the arm with some painkiller. One time they were persuading me, it felt like about half hour. And I said, I, I was adamant, no way. I don't want to be injected. So, uh, in the old ward, I was out of bed for the next day, going back and forth to the toilet, washing. And I was ready to leave. So I'm ready to go, like, I'm packing my suitcase, I'm saying, I'm fit enough, I can walk around. And they agreed. So, I'm pretty sure if I'd, if I'd have taken the bloody injections, I wouldn't have been able to be that fit and recovered so quickly. My tongue was recovering quickly as well. But because I wasn't eating anything, so I was totally fasting in and... Luckily, there's been no recurrence in the last two years, although my lymph nodes have been hurting me quite a lot. I do get pains when the pollution comes, or if, if I eat. So now, since the cancer, I've had to be more strict. I've been stricter than ever. And when I eat any foods, carbohydrate foods, my lymph nodes will ache. Under the arms as well. So it's a danger there for me. I cannot eat that diet. The difference for me now to other people is if I eat the wrong foods, my tongue feels it. It becomes bad. And I've, I've, I've experienced lumps growing on my tongue. Also, my, my throat, my lymph nodes, they, they ache. Other people don't get that. Most people don't even notice the pollution. Most people can go driving in the car lorries and stuff in front of them, pollution getting in the car, they don't notice. I do. I'll get the headache, I'll get the sickness, I, I, I can get really ill. But uh, there we are now, I'm on the lion diet for 34 days. I did a video yesterday about how it can improve your willpower. Tenfold, easily tenfold, hundredfold. You go on the, you go on the lion diet, and you, you're having problems giving up medications or 
caffeine, coffee, butter. You're going to find it a lot easier. The longer you go on the lion diet, I don't, I, I'm at a single craving now. All I crave for is my next meal. And I'm drinking cold water and I add salt, rock salt to my food and that's it. Beef, rock salt and cold water. Volvic water I'm drinking. That's it. What I've noticed the most is my thinking is a lot clearer. I'm thinking clearer. Now after a month I thought of starting my own YouTube channel. I'm talking to a camera now, which I would never want to do before. I, and I wouldn't even be able to talk like this. I'd be mixing up my words because I have the terrible stutter and terrible to remember the words. I'd be getting stuck on words. Now I'm talking, this is good for me. I don't know what you think of my talking as a viewer. I know I've got a bit of a lisp with the tongue now because I've had a lot of it cut away. But um, I'm no well, I wouldn't say I'm normally much worse. Maybe this is normal now to be talking no better. Maybe n normally worse when I was worse is because of all the terrible food that the we led to believe is good for us, which I ate through the years. Now I'm eating this diet, this is probably more normal. So now I'm speaking better, I'm thinking more clearly, I'm not getting mixed up my words, I'm not forgetting what I've got to say in the middle of sentences so much. That's noticeable. So willpower in increase, cravings decrease, and thinking clearer are the main things. As for exercise, I'm still not great, I'm still... I've still got lots of aches and pains. They haven't cleared up. They're not going to clear up that soon, I don't think. But I think they're a lot better than they would be. My knee, my knees, like, they're hurting a bit, but I, I can walk. I can go walking with pains. Also, my anxiety and PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, which I've had. That's not going to get away. I've still got, I've still got loads of worries. I'm not going to pretend I'm all doing brilliant. No, I've still got a lot of worries. As you can see with the lines on my face, the anxiety I've suffered through. I've got the worried look. I've always got the worried look on my face. Due to the stress I've been through, I think. But there we are. It's a bit of a long video. I didn't mean it to be that long. I've gone into a bit of detail. Hopefully it'll be of a use to some people, help some people and uh, I keep on thinking of things to go on about. But this, is me, this is my cancer one. I've survived two years, just over two years now. It hasn't come back yet, I'm hoping it's not going to. I'm planning to move away to a less polluted area because to me pollution is just as bad as Eating a bad diet affects, affects me, if not worse. So, not, no, no other county was a mention pollution, that, like the amount which I think about it, and yet I will give a lot of information. So, if you're interested, keep up to date on my uh, one year lion diet challenge. Give me a follow, give the video a like, and give me a comment. That way I'll get noticed because at the minute nobody's finding my videos so hopefully if I post a few more and more people find me it could get popular, hopefully. Okay, bye for now. Big ol'.